Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. They're jumping off buildings, setting themselves on fire. They're ordinary kids. You think you're professionals, you're not. Attempting dangerous stunts. I'm taking safety and precautions. Yeah, we saw the safety precautions on the vending machine. And daring others to do them online. Your kids watch them, and they go, <laughs> let's see if we can do that. Extreme teen danger. You are purposely putting yourself in harm's way. I just like the rush. Now, Rob is a firefighter and a paramedic who says he sees far too many teens wind up in Austin's situation, or tragically, much worse. Rob wants to demonstrate just how quickly fire can turn deadly if your kids try body spray with fire. Thanks for being here, by the way. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Um, parents, the reason that I'm talking about this is because there is this trend right now where kids are using body spray as an accelerant, right? Correct. And the, the idea is they're using something that has an alcohol base. Some people are using uh, gasoline actually mixed with that. It can be extremely dangerous. But what they're not thinking about is what they're actually wearing, the clothing that they have on, the hairspray that's on, the body spray that's actually on them. The idea is they're Which gonna is light also it. combustible, right? E extremely combustible. And the idea is they're gonna light it and it's gonna easily go out. But that's actually not the case. But so are these guys okay right here? Oh, yeah, they're going to be fine right here. We actually did practice this before. Yeah, I know so. you did. Uh, <laughs> you know, Travis, why don't you come on up? Because i got a few questions for All you right. here in just a second. Because you're going to tell us what happens when this goes wrong. All right, go ahead. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're, we're going to uh, apply a body spray. And again, this is, it's not only just body spray. It could be mixed with gasoline or lacquer. Uh, there is some, some additional stuff that's on here. But we're just going to paint the clothing like what the kids do. So this is exactly what the kids do. Exactly what they're going to do. And then we're going to light it on fire. Okay, let's do it. If okay, you see the, the, the idea is that's supposed to burn off, right? Correct. But, but if, if they miscalculate it... The hair's already starting to get going, and you have all of this lighting up. You've got the hair burning. It's extending into the airway. The skin would probably be fluffing off right about now. It's extremely, extremely painful and dangerous. And then when we need IV access to transport someone to the emergency room, the problem that you're going to have is that we can't get IV access because yeah. the skin has all been burned off. And you can see that this amount of flame would obviously cause some airway problem, airway compromises, the doctor can tell you. Okay, let's put that out. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, now, Dr. Stork, tell us here. A, a kid does this, it goes badly. When you're breathing in that heat, your airway gets swollen so quickly, if you don't get an airway in there, you can die before you ever get to help. In a, in a fast hurry, right? I mean, this could happen. It closes up quick, and, and they, they, they suffocate. Usually in the ER, we put a tube in to help people breathe before it's too late, because once the airway is swollen, sometimes you can't even get the tube past it. What's the first thing that, that, that happens when it burns the skin? There's different layers of your skin. The outer layer is the epidermis, then it burns into the dermis. Once it burns through that dermis, the skin is gone forever. And if you, you want something painful, they have to take skin grafts from other parts of your body. And many people will always say, you've seen this. Yes. The most painful thing is to have skin literally taken from maybe your leg and then put on your face or your neck to cover the area of that burn. It's very painful. All right, next, the scariest thing Rob has ever seen. We'll be right back. Well, we've been trying to get through to teens, and their moms get it, trust me, their dads get it, about the dangerous stunts they're trying and then posting on the Internet. I asked Dr. Stork to be here today, host of The Doctors. He has a new book called The Doctor Is In. And let me tell you, this is a book you're going to want to read, and you're going to want to keep it where you can pick it up. And there's just good tips in here, and not one of them is to put yourself in harm's way, right? That, you know, there's seven... <laughs> Steps to optimal wellness? Yeah. None of them. None of them. None of them is lighting yourself on fire. Or jump off of a backstop, that. light yourself on fire. <laughs> All right, we have a couple of photographs of a boy who sprayed himself with aerosol and got burned. He just sprayed himself with this with the idea that it would just, that when it burned off, it's over. Correct. But it soaks in, right? The idea is there'll be a small blue flame that's going to extinguish itself, but as the doctor can tell you, that's not the reality. The skin is very delicate. It can continue to burn. 
And um, once that happens, and including the airway compromise, you're talking about complication after complication. Not to mention what we didn't even discuss with secondary injury is once you catch on fire, what that child does in a panic situation. It's not like it's going to be calm. Once his hair catches on fire and starts to burn, he's going to be running somewhere, and you never know what he's going to run into, if he's in the street, if he's going to get struck by a vehicle. So that secondary trauma is also a concern that we have. What's the scariest thing you've ever seen? Uh, one of the discussions we're having about is uh, two gentlemen that were trying to use gasoline to use the, on their carburetors of the boat to get the boat fired up. That actually ignited, exploded, and caught them both on fire. When we got there, the fire was out, but the damage had already been done. Um, the skin was already sloughed off. They had basically what we call as being degloved. Um, the skin had just peeled right off and melted off of their arms and their extremities. Their airways were compromised. They were extremely thirsty, asking to drink water. They were in a lot of pain. We were unable to start IVs on them because they had no skin, no IV access for us to do that. And then you're exposed to infection, and then as well as electrolyte imbalance, and then the airway compromise. You're opening yourself up to just a quandary of different things that can go wrong. Yeah, Wor so worst not... night I've ever had in the ER was when a nursing home caught fire. And it, it, the injuries are so severe and saddening that the fact that kids are doing this voluntarily makes me ill. Well, I told you at the top of the show to hit your TiVo button. I hope you did, because I want you to watch this with your kids. We'll be right back.